National Park. Hey folks, this is Mark, Dispersed Camper Man. I'm uh, currently dispersed camped on some BLM land in the uh, southern part of Arizona, and it's just uh, north of uh, the town of Tucson. To find this place, you'll be turning off of I-10 onto East Park Link Drive, and then uh, East Park Link Drive is paved road. You'll be following that for six miles. On that road, you'll be turning onto a no-name dirt road. You'll be turning right. Follow that dirt road for probably about a uh, thousand feet, and uh, that's where I'm dispersed camped at. Folks, if you can tell, if you like the desert greenery, this place has it. Has the swaros, uh, creso bushes, I think what you're called, the uh, uh, choya. Lots of vegetation around through here. I'm really enjoying it. Let's take a look around. Well, there's the road I came in off of. Probably about a thousand feet, the uh, hardball roads up there. Look at this, folks. I'm all nestled up in my dispersed camping spot right there. What a view. Right down there, which I don't know if you've heard it or not, right down there is the uh, firing range. Pretty much this whole hill right here is. Uh, people coming out here to shoot you should start hearing some uh, shooting here in a little bit there's uh, people out there shooting pretty much all day but they do normally quit when it gets dark and they start back up probably eight o'clock in the morning I haven't been here on the weekend it's probably worse on the weekend <clears throat> so this is a BLM shooting spot Right there is the uh, rules. So folks, if you don't like gunshots or being around guns or hearing gunshots all day, this is definitely not the place for you. Let's take a look at that view though. Lots of greenery for the desert. There you go, you can hear him shooting. Now for me, I mean, it don't bother me, them uh, shooting. They're out there uh, firing their guns, having a blast. It was good. But like I said, if you don't like uh, guns, don't like being around guns, don't like hearing guns being shot, this spot is definitely not the place for you. I am definitely enjoying this view. I squeezed in between this tree and this choa cactus right here. This thing is pretty awesome. <clears throat> Look at that. That's freaking neat. It's dropping some of its parts in the ground. Hoping somebody, someone or something will pick it up and carry it away and help propagate it. I have gotten it stuck into my uh, shoe numerous occasion. I do need to get some hard sole shoes though. Isn't that pretty cool, I think. These are creso bushes, I think what they're pronounced. It did sprinkle here and these things smell these things smell so good after the rain. First thing in the morning when I open up the door, these creosote bushes smell excellent. They haven't already need to bottle it. They got a lot of uh, swirl cactuses out here. They're pretty cool. All kind of green stuff out here. I'm enjoying it. Definitely, folks, uh, if you come out here, you want to keep it, your dog on a leash. Don't let them be running. God, this stuff's all over the uh, ground right here. Your choa cactus. They're doing their best to propagate. 
Look at that, I just got some on my shoe right there, just walking past it. <laughs> look at that, that's pretty cool looking, I think. They're just trying to survive. I like them. I think they're pretty cool looking. So here's my view, folks. Beautiful. These chilla cactus are everywhere around here. Even on this side of my truck. I do got a uh, trail cam out. Got a couple of them out. I just threw it right there in that tree. So far I've caught was uh, a rabbit on one of my trail cams. I like throwing it out, trail cams, and just seeing what's out here overnight. I got a dead sore over there. I think I've showed you guys before these dead sores. Let's go there and check it out. That's crazy right there. This is one of those dead sore cactuses right here. Something's killed it. What happens is they just start shedding everything they got. It decomposes on the ground. What I thought was really cool about these was the inside of them. You wouldn't think they'd be wood, but they are. Look at that. That's, a, that's wood right there. Inside, just falling down inside. This one's about ready to go over, actually. I thought that was pretty neat. Pretty neat. Yeah, folks, this place isn't very hard to get to. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you to the road up there. It's about a thousand feet up there and uh, show you how the road is coming into here. Take a look. <clears throat> yeah, folks, this road right here is East Park Link Drive Road. It's uh, paved, pretty good little road. And this turnoff right here, there is no uh, name, no signage to let you know when to turn. I'll leave the uh, grid coordinates to this turnoff right here if you're interested in coming down here. In order to get to my spot, it's probably about a little way down this road. And this right here is probably the worst spot on this road to get to my camping spot. Uh, coming across this, I did uh, drag my rear motorcycle carrier just a little bit. Not bad though. I just saw a car go through this. He didn't drag, so just be aware of this right here. <coughs> and also this first spot up here. There's a uh, bumper pole travel trailer right there. He made it back here, all right. He was here before I even got here. This spot right here is actually, let's see, just camping, 14 day limit, and no dumping. So yeah, so there's a, First camp. This is the first spot right here on the left. I was about to camp next to somebody, so I went on down. And there's the next available spot right here. This is pretty cool. Like a little uh, turnaround right here. That's the second spot on the left you could possibly get. I haven't seen nobody in that camping spot because I've been here. And right down here. So I'm not too far from the road. You actually see me right there. So yeah, this is the road to come in to get to my spot. And of course, you keep it going down. Now that's the firing range. Every, every, at the base of that mountain, there's a firing area to shoot. Here's where I chose to camp at. Oh, 
home sweet home folks Yeah, folks, like I said, it ain't uh, too bad of a road up to where I'm at right there. It's like that one spot I showed you up there. Uh, you might want to be careful with that. You might uh, drag or something like that. But that bumper pull uh, travel trailer made it in here okay, so you should be all right. Yeah, folks, one of the main reasons I wanted to come here, I wanted to definitely go up there and try to check out the uh, Sororo National Park right up here. From where my location right here, it's about a 30, 35 minute drive on my motorcycle. Uh, some of you guys suggested it, so uh, I went ahead and decided to go over there and uh, ride through it a little bit on my motorcycle. Uh, first time you enter the park, there's that uh, Sororo National uh, Park sign right there. I thought that was pretty cool looking, and the scenery really starts right there. Uh, jumped up a motorcycle, took a picture, some video right there. A lot of Sororos out there when you're driving around. And just driving through the park, I mean, you got some uh, very outstanding views out there. Uh, glad I did it. Beautiful scenery down through there. And I came to a sign and it said uh, Sorrow National Visitor Center uh, building. So I did a uh, stop in there and I definitely uh, checked everything out in there. Had some pretty cool displays in there and the uh, scenery around that place is also pretty neat. Then of course I had to visit that gift shop. Uh, as most of you guys know, I am uh, collecting the uh, National Park Monument medallions. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm up to four of them right now. I uh, went ahead and grabbed the uh, Sforo National Park uh, walking stick medallion, bought that and uh, stuck it on my uh, walking stick. Yeah, folks, if you're uh, in the area, I highly suggest that it's uh, driving through the uh, Sororo National Park up there. Uh, it sets aside for us to enjoy, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, riding through there. Yeah, folks, uh, like I said, this here is a very popular shooting range right here on BLM property. And uh, like I said, if you don't like the gunshots, you definitely don't want to come out here because they do shoot all day long. Uh, as long as I've been here anyway. But if you look at the mountain right here, yeah, folks, if you look at the uh, this big mountain right here, uh, they have shooting ranges all the way around pretty much this whole mountain, but there is a dirt road that goes around the base of it. That's what I've been uh, doing my evening and morning walks. I go around through here, and one evening I went through there, and uh, I saw something way ahead on the trail on the dirt road couldn't really tell what it was and then i zoomed in on it and i was waiting for it to stand up and finally it uh, stood up and i recognized it was the uh, bobtail so i noticed okay. the tail was bobbed well that was a uh, a bobcat dang it. dang it it's looking at me Let's see how close i can get Walking away, I'll probably get a better look at him. I don't know. I'm thinking that's a bobcat. Let me look the other way. That looked pretty cool. So another encounter with the wildlife here in the desert. I thought that was pretty neat. I did go up there and try to uh, see if I could find the tracks on it. I am where he uh, jumped back into the bushes. I'm sure he's not here. I am not seeing. No finger, I don't see no footprints. Oh. I couldn't find the tracks. It completely disappeared. 
And while I've been here, uh, it did sprinkle off and on one day. And it actually caught me on my walk over there around that mountain. Uh, it kind of stopped sprinkling. And I uh, looked up and there's actually a rainbow up there. Rainbow in the sky. I thought that was pretty neat. Caught a uh, swirl cactus in the view. And then the uh, rainbow up in the sky. You just never know what you're going to see when you're walking out in the desert. Most people, including myself, would think the desert is barren. Then I get out here and take a look at all this. I mean, greenery everywhere. The desert's alive. I just love this view. Like I said earlier, especially walking out first thing in the morning. I smell that creosote bushes in the air. Ah, it's strongest at that point. Definitely beautiful area. If you're uh, wanting to visit Tucson, Tucson's about 30, 40 minutes right down the road south of us. It's a pretty convenient place. Yeah, folks, I thought I'd do this uh, video to let you know the dispersed camping opportunities on BLM. That's uh, this little north of uh, uh, Tucson. So if you need to have business or something in the area of Tucson, uh, this is some pretty good uh, BLM opportunities here that you can uh, uh, disperse camp at. And uh, tonight's my uh, third night here, and I have got to uh, get moving uh, west. Uh, like I said, uh, you probably throughout this video you've heard the gunshots, so if that's not disturbing to you or don't like that, and like I said, definitely don't come here. Uh, they do shoot most of the day. Hey guys, appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, if you could, go hit that subscribe button, like button, leave a comment, and uh, go ahead and uh, follow me if you can on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Just punch in a dispersed camper man and I, my profile will uh, pull up. Also, I'm going to put this... Uh, my dispersed camping location right here in Red Corners in the, this video description. Yeah, guys, yes, folks, appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, see you next time.